Ravens fans, I am here with Daniel Jeremiah from the NFL Network. You can watch him on the Combine coverage all week long. So, Daniel, I want to get your take on this draft and how it pertains to the Ravens. Just, just to start big picture, when you look at this draft, how do you feel like the strengths of this draft match up against what the Ravens need? I think it matches up pretty well. You know, you start with the with the tackle position. It's a really deep group of offensive tackles. So uh, that could be a direction that the Ravens look to go. I feel like uh, for 10 years now, we can even though they're hitting on them, we can still say receiver every year <laughs> just because it's fun. Uh, you know, obviously it's a it's a good group of receivers. Corners is deep. Um, so no, I think there's uh, I think that marries up pretty well. And the the thing about the Ravens is, you know, they'll. It was such a good job of just letting it play out and see who falls. And I joked on social media the other day that somebody asked, who are the Ravens going to take? I'm like, well, you tell me what great player is going to fall down there, and I'll tell you who they're going to take. Yeah, in terms of the offensive line, I know that in, in your latest mock, you have him taking Mims out of yeah. Georgia. You know, we'll see if he ends up making it to 30. And just with this offensive line group, why is it that you feel like this is a talented group? And, and how deep can you go and still get a potential plug-and-play starter in this class? Well, I think there's a lot of them, but they're going to go. I mean, it's such a premium position. So if, if I have, you know, eight guys that I have in that first round range, I think there's a chance we see all eight of them go in the first round. And then after that, I think you know, some intriguing guys, but I think it starts to kind of fall off uh, pretty significantly after that first clump of guys. Um, and then when you look, you know, kind of on the interior, you've got a handful of those guys, and I think there's a gap before you get to the next wave. So offensive line-wise, I feel like we're going to jam them all in to one <laughs> and probably take a little bit of a pause, and then you'll see another run start going a little later. Now, you mentioned wide receiver. It seems kind of crazy to think the Ravens could take another first round. <laughs> wide receiver, but they've done it yeah. in three out of Eric's first five drafts as a general manager. Would it shock you if you went first round wide receiver again? I would be surprised, but I wouldn't use shock. I don't think I'll ever use that word. <laughs> but just, I mean, when you look at the AFC, and they, I mean, they're right in the middle of it, when you see the firepower of the teams that you're going to go up against, I, you know, there's nothing wrong with adding more weapons. You know, I don't know that you ever have enough from that standpoint, but uh, man, if they could just get a clone of uh, Flowers and throw him in there, I think they'd be okay with that too. Yeah, the other uh, way to address kind of the firepower pieces is, is running back. And the Ravens got questions at running back. Gus Edwards, free agent, J.K. Dobbins, free agent, Keith Mitchell coming off the injury. Eric DaCosta talked that they want to add pieces to this running back mix over the course of, of this offseason, whether it's free agency or the draft. What is your impression of this draft class in the running back position? It's, I think there's six to eight guys that are very similarly graded, and not, none of them carrying a first-round grade. I don't have them in, in my top 50 players. But I think that's the, the part of the draft, late second round into the third round, where there might be a game of chicken where people are kind of waiting to see when the first one's going to go. Maybe I don't want to be the first one on this ride, but I want to get on the ride before it stops. So I think we see a run of those guys, like late two into the early portion of the third round. I think you'll see a, like six, seven, eight of those guys. Okay. And the other thing that's interesting about DaCosta's draft strategy so far is that, yes, there's been a lot of wide receivers, but the Ravens have also bucked the trend in certain ways in terms of taking positions that don't have as high of a value. They took Kyle Hamilton and picked number 14. They've taken a first-round center, and they've taken a first-round inside linebacker. What does that drafting history, does it tell us anything about what they could do moving forward this year and, and how that could affect them in this year's draft? It helps when they have done a good job of building up the line of scrimmage. You know, It gives you the luxury to be able to take some of those quote-unquote non-premium positions. So when you're in pretty good shape defensive line-wise with depth, you're in pretty good shape as they've been offensive line-wise with depth, that, that affords you the luxury to take those non-premium positions. But it also just goes back to they're one of the few teams, everybody says it, the Ravens, you know, believe it and, and it shows up in their actions is that it is best player available. We are not going to bypass a great player uh, at a position where we're comfortable to take a good player at a position of need. They just won't do it. Mm -hmm. And pick number 30, if the Ravens were to go pass rusher, that's another spot that, you know, that's the thing that makes this draft so interesting for the Ravens. You could go pass rusher, you could go offensive line, you could go corner, you could go receiver. But at pass rusher specifically, they've got questions. Clowney's a free agent, Van Noy's a free agent. You know, they've got some young pieces there, but who were the guys in that end of first round range that you think could make sense? Two guys, I would say Darius Robinson from Missouri makes a lot of sense, and he's kind of a big, rugged edge rusher. He means he's 286 pounds and he plays on the edge, so he kind of fits the way they like to play their real rugged uh, dude. And then, you know, Chop Robinson doesn't have the production that you'd want, you know, but it's just something the Ravens are familiar with and just take buying the traits, believe in the traits. Uh, super, super explosive, and uh, and that would be another one I would consider. All right, well, Daniel, you going to try to get any intel out of Eric this week? 
He's not saying anything. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> his buddies. No, I'm not getting anything out of him. He's tight-lipped. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for the time. Appreciate it. Thanks.